Welcome to a new Neville update. I'm your host, Ashley Neville. The conference finals are starting to get interesting, except for the blowouts. This episode takes you around the league, cat claws, Steph gonna Steph, and Return of the King. So what's going on in Minnesota all of a sudden? Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you guys just have your best season in the past 15 years? Apparently, Coach Tibbs threw a computer out a window. My question is, was the window open or closed? Oh, and what was on the computer that got him so mad? Maybe he's not a fan of Call of Duty. What's up? Why are you camping in there? Why are you camping in there? Bro, I see you. Bro, stop. Stop camping. I don't want I love you to show my team and shoot them for that. Uh oh, look at that genuine enthusiasm and fun Kat is having with a potential new teammate. If the Kings were smart, they'll put together a trade package, including that lottery pick. It's worth a shot. Jimmy Butler is one of the best two way players in the game, and Andrew Wiggins clearly has talent, but what if Kat isn't too confident with that environment? In the playoffs, he looked like a young star who couldn't handle the bright lights. But maybe the feel and vibe with that coach and that chemistry just doesn't fit the type of player he wants to become. Or maybe he's just flirting with other teams so the T-Wolves give him more love and attention. Who knows? Gotta give him his props though. He's in the conversation of the top five big men in the game and he's only 22. Now Phoenix might have their eye on another franchise player to potentially team up with Devin Booker. As if this Luka Doncic or DeAndre Ayton conversation wasn't complicated enough. Good luck, sons. Hope you don't blow it. If you missed the Warriors Rockets game three, all you really need to know is that the two-time MVP y'all said was washed up and hurt a week ago, well, his shot is cleaner than ever. That he's 100%. For his part, Steph Curry says that he has not lost confidence in himself on the floor. As you can see. The extra pass, the ball movement. How about this? Curry driving and then getting the ball back. That Coming alive, as you mentioned, Reggie, in game two. Curry on the drive. Steph the Chef was in the kitchen cooking. He was dancing and reminding us that he can get the crowd so hype that the other team can't even hear their own teammates. Curry trying to work behind screens. Picked up here by Harden, shoots over him. Look at this. Mr. Harden, would you like this dance? And then after Whatever home cooking Aisha gave him clearly worked. He showed up to make a statement. Oh, he wants this shot right here. Oh, he makes a move and scores! The shake and right here, shake and bake, all the way to the hole, one hand, and let people know. And to be totally honest, Houston just never had a rhythm. They cut it to 13 in the middle of the third, but then Steph started shimmying, and the Warriors won by 41. Uh, everyone's doing the <laughs> Steph shimmy. <laughs> I got it. I got it from my main man Antoine Walker. Yeah. Antoine, where you at, baby? Uh, <laughs> I got it from my man Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson made it up. Yeah, I didn't get it. From I don't know if he made it up, but he was he, he copied it off of somebody. All right. What would you do if they shimmied on you, Chuck? Oh, you got to take a hard <laughs> foul, man. You you can't let people be shimmying on you, man. Come on. So Come every, on. Shimmy, so, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, y'all. So. D'Antoni called his team soft. Well, at least he's being realistic. One night, everyone says, Steph can't defend. Then the next game, it's James Harden with no defensive effort whatsoever. It's funny how the tables turn. But also defensively, defensively. we didn't switch up into people. We didn't box off. Uh, it's just, every, you know, one thing led to another. Played soft, actually. I mean, when you can't do that with these guys. These guys are good. And we still might not have won. We, of course, you got to play well. We didn't make shots early. We turned it over. I mean, just, it was not a very good game. And we're going to have to play a lot better on Tuesday. The Oracle Arena crowd deserves a lot of credit. But Houston, just because your shots aren't falling doesn't mean you could just play half-ass defense. Sorry, that's not going to cut it against the defending champs. All that regular season stuff is over. 65 wins and the best record doesn't matter when you lose home court. Since nobody else is gonna say it, I guess I have to be the bad guy or girl, you know what I mean. 
Love the fact that Tatum is a student of the game and watched Kobe's detail 25 times, breaking down his on-the-court mindset, but come on! It didn't seem to help him on the road against the Cavs. Yeah, he had 18 points, but come on! One rebound and one assist? You have to make an impact beyond just scoring, especially on the road. The role players on the Cavs all did what they're supposed to do. Well, what do you know? Nice to see you, J.R. Smith. Oh, George Hill, glad you remembered who you are and that you have a shorter guard on you. Braun is Braun. If you waste your opportunity stepping onto the floor with the GOAT, it's your fault. If you do your part, he will make it worth your while. All five starters scored in double figures. This is what y'all are supposed to do. Play like that consistently and you'll be back in the finals. That's all I've got for this week's Neville Update. Be on the lookout for more NBA Conference Finals coverage on our next recap. Shout out to my co-producer Winston T. Marshall for all of his help, my sponsor Ivan Almonte, and a special thanks to the MyVids team for letting me use this space to create magic. Thanks for watching!